we have, as a matter of fact, applied for certification for the 0.05 engine. And that means then that by quarter four this year, it will be available for, uh, for, for sale to our customers. Hi, I'm Jeff Christie on behalf of CCJ and Clean Trucking, and we're here in Anaheim, California at At Expo to talk to Volvo Trucks North America's Peter Vorhuva about their new Lonox engine, as well as the state of the alternative power market. So hey Peter, before we get into your announcement here at Ag Expo, let's first discuss the D13 VGT that you guys introduced at TMC. This is the third variant now of the D13 along with the D13 TC. Tell us a little bit about that engine. Yeah, so we launched the all new VNL last year. That is then with the, the 13 liter turbo compounding engine. For the long haul applications in the VNR, we have decided to launch the VGT engine, which will grave great fuel savings in that specific segment. Tell us a little bit about the new variant that was just introduced at Act Expo that has the 0.05 NOx. So what we have done is that we uh, came out with carb, carb emission compliant engines. We have the 1.0 for the moment. And now we have, as a matter of fact, applied for certification for the 0.05 engine. And that means then that by quarter four this year, it will be available for, uh, for, for sale to our customers. The Knox engine has a couple different components using the same architecture of the D13 engine, uh, but some new things you'll notice here in the chassis layout. We'll have a 48 volt alternator. We'll have our uh, after treatment system. And then also we'll add a 48 volt battery to the system. The engine here has our standard alternator, but you also notice here that we have the 48 volt alternator. Again, that's gonna supply voltage over here to the uh, 48 volt lithium ion battery. Once that's done, we'll go into their after treatment system. This is a very similar design that's in our VNL today uh, with a small caveat to it. As we get inside of it, we have our diesel oxidizing catalyst, our DPF, uh, our SCR and ammonia slip catalyst here, but we have one additional feature here, uh, which is a heater. Now that heater is a grid heater, and it's gonna heat up the exhaust to uh, evaporate the uh, DEF fluid in the after treatment system, and then convert the NOx as it goes through the SCR and AC, ASC. This engine's available in a 425, 1750, and a 455, 1850 engine. Um, again, will be later. Will be available here later this year. Q4 is anticipated uh, delivery time. So, it's talking about battery electric for a minute. Yeah. You guys have the VNR electric that's fully out in the market. You have uh, uh, teased the press with, at least with the VNL electric last year. Yeah. OEMs like Volvo and Freightliner are already well positioned to meet the needs of their customers, right, in the electric sphere. Yeah. Here in California, certainly there's applications in ports, there's applications in certain municipalities, and there's the charging infrastructure there to support that. But when you look at the US as a whole, you have a lot of spotty or even non-existent charging infrastructure there. So what are your concerns as a manufacturer with an electric product already in market alongside of that lack of infrastructure development on the charging side? So the adaptation of battery electric vehicles is actually a result of, of a couple of components, right? First, we need to have the products available now that we have done with the VNR electric. We introduced it in 2020 and actually proud to say that basically since 2020, we've been leading that market with 40% market share. Then at the same time, we all know that market is small and it, is, it goes less fast than, 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 than what we hoped for. The acceleration in the adaptation of battery electric vehicles is determined by the availability of the products, by the availability of reliable infrastructure, but also by the availability of incentives in order to get the volume going. Those three work together. We strongly believe, again, that this will, that this will happen. Uh, then you know, it might not be at the speed that we originally, originally planned. In order to help infrastructure, we have then a year and a half ago, together with um, Daimler and, uh, and International, we have set up PACT, Powering America Commercial Transport, uh, which is a trade association that drives awareness on how do we work now with electric vehicle uh, charging systems. And what you see is then, and then you see two different things. You see what we call behind the fence charging and public charging. And I think there's a lot of focus on behind the fence charging right now, especially with the applications that we have, regional hall, uh, city distribution. Uh, but we also see uh, developments in public charging right now. We have a cooperation with uh, GreenLane, uh, we have a strategic partnership with Pilot Flying J, and we have launched Volvo Open Charge, which is a look 
book and pay application in order to help our customers to find a charging station. So one of the alternative power technologies that is happening currently with Volvo overseas is hydrogen powered truck development. Yeah. Do you see a roadmap for Volvo trucks North America to have a hydrogen based product here in North America? Yeah, so we're working on hydrogen in two ways. We have a hydrogen fuel cell and then we have hydrogen internal combustion engine. We have a joint venture, Sephora, together with Westport in order to develop then the technology for, uh, for hydrogen internal combustion. Next year, we're gonna try this out in applications in Europe already, uh, and then we'll see from there. Talking a little about the regulatory environment for a minute, the yeah. advanced clean fleets rule has been pulled back. And now the advanced clean trucks and omnibus low NOx emissions rules are in the current administration's crosshairs. So how does the uncertainty of the regulatory environment, or in this case, a deregulatory environment, like we're now, how does that impact how OEMs plan for future product? So we, we have long-term sustainability goals. Ultimately, by 2040, we want to be CO2 or CO2 neutral. And, and we have a three-prong approach. We have battery electric vehicles, we're working on hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, and we're working on internal combustion engines with, for instance, renewable diesel. And we strongly believe that all these technologies together will work to a more sustainable future. What then regulations will change uh, uh, is, 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 another, is another story, quite frankly. Thank you, Peter. Appreciate your time. You're yeah. very welcome. Thanks so much.